Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's July 8th. Have you checked to see if there's an herb society near you? Herb societies offer gardeners what I call next-level understanding of plants. Aside from parsley, oregano, and thyme, you'll probably be surprised by the sheer number of plants that fall into the herbal category. Plants like bronze fennel, red-veined sorrel, lovage, tansy, and sweet sicily, just to name a few. Here's today's brevities. On this day in 1878, the American botanist Forrest Shreve was born. We owe such a debt of gratitude to Shreve. He was the preeminent botanist of North American deserts during the first half of the 20th century. Shreve worked out of a laboratory in Tucson, Arizona. Shreve relished telling the origin story of his lab. He said, of course, you're familiar with the story of Andrew Carnegie. Before he died, Andrew Carnegie established an institution which divided its scientific investigations into 12 departments in widely separated parts of the country. The Desert Laboratory became one of the outposts of the Division of Plant Biology. The total Carnegie benefaction totaled about $25 million. In July of 1908, Shreve ascended the Santa Catalina Mountains for the very first time. His party rode on horses to climb the 6,000 feet from Mount Lemons Desert Base to the summit, which is about 9,100 feet above sea level. During that climb, Shreve noticed what he called a continually shifting panorama of vegetation. Shreve's astuteness helped him realize the most amazing aspect of desert mountains. Changes in vegetation are compressed into a few thousand feet of elevation. Shreve's mastery of the North American desert allowed him to describe and define with precision the four distinct desert regions of the United States. Today, each year in Shreve's honor, the Forrest Shreve Student Research Award is given to support ongoing research of the hot deserts of North America. Today in 1901, the world lost Eva Reed, a botanist, author, and librarian with the Missouri Botanical Gardens. In a tragic accident, Reed had been sketching on the tracks of the Burlington Railway when she was run over and instantly killed by a passenger train. Several years earlier, she had become almost totally deaf as the result of a fever. And today, in 1934, Leonard Cocaine passed away. Cocaine was 79 and was considered New Zealand's greatest botanist. Cocaine was born in England, and he was raised in a home that encouraged the exploration and appreciation of the natural world. As a child, he loved pressing flowers. In addition, both his brother and sister were great gardeners. In 1879, Cocaine made his way to New Zealand, and Dominion became his home for the remainder of his life. Ever modest, he once sent a letter to Q along with a small parcel of seeds. He attached a little note which said, I may say I am not a nursery gardener, but merely a private individual who spends his whole time in the study of botany. In recognition of his 30 years of tireless work, Cocaine won the Darwin Medal. During his career, Dr. Von Gerbel and John Paulus Lotze made the trip to New Zealand. Those visits were the true highlights of Cocaine's career. When he died, Cocaine was buried at the open-air museum he founded. From his grave, one can see the native vegetation which had captured his heart, as well as the heights which bear his name. 
And today we wish Monty Don a happy birthday. Don is an English television presenter, writer, and speaker on horticulture, and he's best known for presenting the BBC television series Gardener's World. Over the past year, he wrote Japanese Gardens, the complement to the BBC Two series. Don guides us through the history and beauty of Japanese gardens throughout the spectacular changing seasons. In unearthed words, National Meadows Day took place over the weekend in the UK. It's an annual celebration of the wildflower meadows of England. Each year, the event takes place on or around the first Saturday in July. So, in tribute, here's a little poem about the Meadow Suite by Charles McKay. Rose, we love thee for thy splendor. Lily, for thy queenly grace. Violet, for thy lowly merit, peeping from thy shady place. But mine airy woodland fairy, scattering odors at thy feet, no one knows thy modest beauty. No one loves thee, meadow sweet. Today's book recommendation is A Sense of Place, The Life and Work of Forrest Shreve by Janice Emily Bowers. This book was the first in-depth study of Shreve's life and work. The author shares a friend's description of Shreve, which compares him to a desert in his patience and his detachment, and like the desert, he put on a good display when he flowered. For today's garden chore, stop fertilizing in hot weather. Heat is a stressor for most plants, and they'll do better without having to contend with fertilizer while they're trying to survive the hottest part of the summer. Think about fertilizing as a shoulder season activity, spring and fall. The temps are cooler, and water is generally more plentiful. As always, after you fertilize, make sure to water your garden well. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It was about 140 years ago that the town of Hindustan, Indiana, was abandoned by its residents because of a plague of milk fever. The disease occurs after cows have eaten wild snake root. A few years ago, a botanist shared that the Hindustan neighborhood is still the best place in the Midwest to collect wild snake root. Wild or white snake root is a problem for livestock if they consume it. All parts of the plant are toxic. Transferring the toxin through cow's milk is a concern for humans. This is known as milk sickness. In the early 1800s, milk sickness resulted in the death of thousands of people. The most famous person to die from it was Abraham Lincoln's mother in 1818. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.